Try to stay optimistic, even when it's not realistic. Cause I can't be so pessimistic, even when I feel contradicted. I'm in the gutter seat of the life I'm living. Any time that I'm meditating, my decision is okay. gonna log my mouth and my mind in prison. You, you like can. to log me down, but now I'm the different. It's nihilism, cause I believe in my ability to spit on the mic and get every kid to shit the rise. And this one thing I practice when I preach it, when I preach it, the practice and exercise is rhythm. Whatever rhyme, the reason I'm not a reason to rhyme. I'm rather always on you, but never keep it in line. You try to do as I do, you should think who you like. You're about to feel it, but you're And I feel the pain through both kidneys And real life just don't miss me Real life and no Disney And I disappointed everybody And I missed the point of every hobby I missed the pointless in the lobby It's just the void inside my body I'm reciting the doubts before I hit the bottom I know writing about it ain't gonna fix the problems But I'd be lying if I say I got the will to stop them I'm right at the start but I'm in my coffin You always fucking say that it's gonna be better But how can I trust you? We ain't in this together If you say I'm gonna learn then I'm sorry but I will never My fear is caught in my brain and it captured the center Set. And I've given up, I don't fight back. Test, I don't know how long I'm test, riding one, this time lapse. But I've right, ended sure all, then I'm my best. I'm not sure when my curse will get buried. I 
after all, I'm not Previous seeking help. Times. And at the end, all the burdens I carry are it everything that make me myself. Yeah. Wait till and I can't say I'm devastated. It's a and feeling I'm used to that I've never faded. Tomorrow's a day I don't celebrate it. It's not like I want to be dedicated to the jealous hatred of the pals that made it. Depending on time, like a hand grenade in my severed brain. I'm procrastinating on every day that my head is wasted. <laughs> so usually when it comes to streams, I'm gonna wait till there's no action. There's not any back and forth conversation going on or anything like that. Then we cut the stream early. Um, let me just see if all the uh, I'm gonna see if all the uh, stuff works before we get started. Uh, These past few days <laughs> have been quite hectic. These past couple of weeks have been quite hectic. <laughs> and it's probably barely because a new video of me on Anthony Padilla's channel came out. And I want to spend this time before I get started on animating and editing and all that fun stuff. Uh, looking at it, looking at the video, expanding on the video, talking about some stuff going on and just what's coming out in the future. So, yeah, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. I am incredibly tired. <laughs> I have like zero grids right now. <laughs> I ain't got, I ain't got that stupid e-grid at the moment. <laughs> I'm trying to see what I can do in that regard. Huh. Oh god. Sorry, I gotta drink more of my ghost. It's not fun. I would love it. I would love my No, I've been thinking about <laughs> what happens if I get my own coffee brand. We call it the Rich Cafe. It'd be pretty awesome. I I'm not there yet, but fingers crossed that I will get to the coffee. genuinely nervous of the reception on in that video. Um, primarily because I'm a completely different person back, back then. And now I'm just like, I don't know. It, just, it feels weird. It feels weird. I am a completely different person. And I don't know. It just, it just feels odd. And I know that people did not like the fact that I am not I find that so funny. I find that so funny. 
so funny. It's so many people. I'm mainly because I didn't expect it. <laughs> I have never came live and discussed my trans and stuff on a different, pu more public outlet. So, so with that being said, I knew for a fact that me coming live in my pansexual fishnet club and my numb binary beanie that my lovely boyfriend made for me. I knew for a fact people were going to give me shit. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> they did. And it is absolutely incredible. Primarily because I predicted it. It's another thing to predict the shit to happen, and then this happens. Woo. Okay. Hold on. And, and we reacting. I'm gonna change the title. Reacting to It's looking better. It's looking better. Okay, it's looking better. Okay, okay. Alright. So anyways, I got shit. I got so much shit <laughs> for that, for me walking on set with my fishnet gloves, my non-binary beanie, and <laughs> I was wearing all my dread non-binary beanie. <laughs> Some of the things I said was a little controversial and doesn't fit with everyone. But I'm hoping that me coming on here will kind of like work out the kinks, you know? Like balance off the uh I can argue myself. issues pertaining to not hearing the video. Um, 
look how tiny you are. Look at tiny baby. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna full screen this. There. We're gonna full screen this. There. Ah! Turning off the background music, I'm going to turn this on. Alright, so one second. Give me a second, I'm just checking the stream real quick, seeing if everything's working. If everything works well, then we get started, but I just want to make sure. All right, now let's play a bit of it. Stick people. All right, now let's play a bit of it. Yes, it works. Okay, alrighty. So this is gonna be fun. <laughs> um. So, anyways, hold on. I'm gonna tell people that I am reacting to the assumptions video. I gotta tell, I gotta, sorry, I gotta tell the Twitter. I'm live reacting to the N. Need to do your assumptions. I will skin. Then I will animate. Come on down. Come on. Down. Alrighty. There we go. Okay. Alrighty. Now that everything's taken care of there. Alrighty, I tweeted it out. I'm going to like and retweet it on my personal account. I have two Twitter accounts. One of them is for... Yeah, okay. Okay. We back. Alrighty. There we go. Huh. Alrighty. Let's do this. Let's see if everything is working well so I can do this. Hey, Jared, I'm doing quite fine. How about yourself? Okay, let's do this. Let's react to this assumptions video. All autistic people are innocent, pure. Look at that. That's, that's a pretty nice look. Honestly, like, bless my, bless my partner. I, it's, I, I look fabulous in this. You could see the raw energy coming out of this video. <laughs> look at God, I love I love it so much. It's so I look so good. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Uh I wanted a lot of people were asking about the stuff. The stuff. So while we're going through this reaction, while we're going through this stream, I'm gonna be posting I'm going to be posting in the link in the description below under all my donation links everything that you guys need to know. Like, where did I get this? Or where did I get that? Or... Hold on. I'm going to tweet this on... Uh, I'm going to post this on Instagram, too. Just so... 
Just so people know that I'm reacting to this. I'm reacting to this. While I do this, how's everyone doing? Are we doing all right? Are we doing homosexual today? Or are we doing straight? Are we are we doing are, are we giving? Are we giving? Is this giving Riz? Let me know in the in the chat. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of this. There. And we're going to be reacting to the assumptions video live. And I'm going to tag Anthony Padilla. I'm also going to tag my other account. Is there a way I could tag someone? There's got to be a way I can mention someone else, right? There. Alrighty. There. Okay. Now we should be... Did I even post... I didn't even post a link. Hold on. Hold on. One sec. I am sorry. I'm sorry. You want to hear something funny about yesterday? Yes. While I go... While I work this out, you go... Tell, tell me. What happened yesterday? Um... So let me fix this real quick. Got to do the taggings again. I'm sorry. I am not really prepared and stuff like that. Robot Richie. And then we're going to post the link to the stream. Right there. Okay. Now we can post it. Alrighty. Okay, we're good now. We're good now. All right. Sorry, I had. To, I, I sorry about the delay. I had to tweet everywhere about me being on here. And now after this, now I'm gonna go onto my other account and share it, and then we're gonna get started. And while we're going on the stream, I will talk about. I will post about certain things. Um. In the description below. Like I know a lot of people were asking about. Um, I know people were asking about the fit that I had. Like the clothes that I wore and stuff. And I will. Uh, share. I'm going to share. My boyfriend's. In, I'm gonna share my boyfriend's um uh what's the word I'm gonna share my boyfriend's store so y if anyone wants to buy some of his stuff you all can do that as well because you know I I, I, I don't I, I'm a bit of a supportive I'm a bit of a supportive boyfriend I, I love what they do they are amazing I love them they got Riz. So, let me, actually, I can't access it. I'm going to just post it in the chat. There. And we're going to pin this. Are we ready? Are we ready to get started? Are we ready to get started and watch this video and finally react to it? I feel like I'm stall I've am stall. i been stalling long enough. Alright, let's do this. Uh, I was When I was walking down the street, somebody thought I was female because of the way I looked. I wish I could get to that point. I wish I could get to that point where I look uh, female to people. All right, let's do this. Anyways, I love that fit. You're a being with no sexual desire. I only look that way. Bad bitches. <laughs> First of all, this is a, uh, it, it, it was so weird coming down to the set. It was just, it was absolutely, it was, oh gosh, it was absolutely weird that I was on set. <laughs> Primarily is because like, the first time I was on Anthony Padilla's channel, I was nervous as hell. I was scared. I was 
I was I just moved like I moved October 2019 and it was the first time it was one of the first times I was completely on my own. And um what's what else? Um This is the first time that I uh identify like I was completely on my own. And then in January 2020 I got on Anthony Padilla. So it was just, I only had like three months of settling into my new place where I could relax. And um, it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun in that time. We got a lot of, uh, we had some issues with um, some fans coming in, sub- watching me and subscribing to me only because I'm an Anthony Padilla and it gave me major imposter syndrome. But we're good now. This time, however, I came in... This was filmed in November of 2023. Um, now I can talk about it because it's out. But uh, this was um, filmed November of 2023. And uh, it came out in April. So you, you could tell how, like, how like drastic the adjustment was, you know? Um, and I was so sick (laughs) i was sick i felt terrible i was going like and stuff like that the entire time and i have a strong feeling that people would have i'm just i'm glad that they were able to cut all that stuff out because i sounded awful (laughs) i felt so bad Alright, so let me go ahead and break down certain stuff. Jasmine and Aniela are wonderful people. They are my friends. And because of being on Anthony Padilla's channel twice, we are now mutuals and we talk to each other. We have a a kind of group chat going on. So I thank Anthony Padilla for for giving me new friends. Because, yeah, I love the friends that I have. I don't know how to answer. You don't look autistic. And the shirt, the shirt is merch. That's on my merch store. You can go to my regular website and find that. Is, is that an insult? Is that a compliment? I'm Something's awesome. different. Yeah, like, why are these <laughs> I love Aniela's. I love Aniela's uh, time she must necklace. Make special needs. Alrighty. This is so weird. I'm still shocked about this. This is so weird. <laughs> Four years ago, I spent a day with autistic people, and we were able to bring. Gosh, this was four years ago. Oh my gosh, that's four years ago. That's almost five years ago. <laughs> Those same three guests. Back- uh, I look gross. I look gross. In- I look skinnier in this, but I look gross in that. I felt so not confident in myself. I was shy. I was only there to make a s- to prove a point. No, I was there to tell my... How I like to think about it is that in the first interview, I was there to prove, to tell my story. And in this assumptions video, I was there to prove a point. I was there to tell a point and tell and tell who I am and what it is. Um, so I was there because I knew for a fact that people were going to give me shit. So I needed to carry myself as if I don't give a shit. Which I don't. It, 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 it's, it's, but like I still wanted to. I, I. It's a lot of pressure when you're. Um, I have two women on both sides of me, and it's just and it's me. I used to be the only male person, and I got into Anthony Padilla's channel because I was an autistic male, and they wanted more male. Div- they wanted his team wanted more diversity. Um. But that changed because now I'm non-binary and female. So, but the problem is not only was I representing a lot of autistic people, excuse me, not only was I representing a lot of autistic people, but I was representing the LGBT side of autistic people. And that put a lot of pressure on me, primarily because it's just like, Okay, if I say something stupid, if I say something dumb, 
everyone's gonna look at me and be like, no, you said this stupid, you said this dumb, you did this, you did that, and I don't want that, I didn't want any of that, hold on, I didn't want that, I didn't want any of that, I wanted to be, I didn't want to be looked at as if, like, I'm misrepresenting people, or I'm saying something out of line, or out of character, so, it was a lot of pressure, so I wanted to carry myself in the video as if, like, I had all the confidence in the world, which I do. I'm, and I mean, no, hold on, that's egotistical. No, I, I have a lot more confidence than I did previously, um, and it's primarily part of it's because of my transitioning, because I've never felt more like myself, and uh, I knew people were gonna give me shit, but I've came to terms with the fact that like, despite like. People are going to care no matter what I do. If I say something wrong, they're going to give me crap for it. If I say something right, some people will give me crap for the way I said it. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter anymore. So, that, so, when I came on to Anthony Padilla's channel, I wanted to go on there as if I really do not care on what people are going to say about the clothes and the outfit that I wear and the statement that I made. Look, my boyfriend also did my makeup, so based to him. Uh, yeah, let's continue. Back today to address your assumptions together. This is one of our most requested episodes. It sucks. I saw this set. I saw the I Spent the Day With set, the new one. But I was in the old set. Um, I was at the old set, and it's, uh... Loki wouldn't mind wanting to go on to I spent a day with Robo Rebellion Studios, but I kind of need to be like you know important to do that. Um, I need to be uh, important to have that kind of status. So for now, I won't probably be able to. But here's the hoping, you know, just here's the hoping. So so let's get into it. Be oh yeah. Also, the fact that peop this was gonna be like the most requested video, I'll, I was. I'm nervous about as well. Alright, I gotta stop talking. Let's keep going. People with autism is the politically correct phrase. You could call autistic people autistic people, people with autism mm -hmm. or yeah. neurodivergent, but sometimes I know neurotypicals like to insult other neurotypicals by calling them autistic, but you can call me that. Like, I don't care. People do that all the time. Like, I'll, I'll be transparent. I do make jokes about my autism, and I... Like I do, like I gen, I want to be as transparent as possible. So if I do, if I say something that is wrong, please feel free to correct me. I don't want to come off as if I'm like a piece of sh shit. Um, so if I say something that's really not okay, please call me out on that, and I'll educate myself better. I make my, I make jokes all the time. I have made jokes multiple times about my autism, and I would be. Like, I do know that a pop, uh, a common, not a common joke, but a joke that I've made in the past, uh, a customer, a customer while I was at, working as a barista, um, saw me very energetic and boastful. They called me retarded. <laughs> they called me flat out retarded, which is, you don't, first of all, you don't say that word. You don't say that word. But you definitely don't say it to an autistic person. And everyone in the staff knows that I'm autistic except for the customers, obviously. So, I would be talking to them and I'd, so I'd be talking... When the customer leaves, um, I am like in, I am one of the leaders at, as a barista. So, I can't like say anything bad. I have to keep myself a public positive uh, face. Hold on, hold on. Okay, we're good. I have to keep a positive face on me. Um, so when someone called me that, it was really hurtful. But I would play a lot. I would play with it. I would make jokes about it. Be like, I, I would look at my um. I would be looking at uh, the customer. I would be looking, talking about the customer to the other coworkers and being like. I can't believe they said that word. I can't believe you, they said the word retarded. That we don't use that word anymore. What are they autistic? <laughs> no, but like of course, of course I'm joking. 
Um, of course, I'm genuinely joking, and everyone knows that I'm joking. But the point that I'm trying to get across is that I joke about my autism all the time. And I use my autism as a bit of a scapegoat because it makes me, it cope. It helps me cope. I cope the best with humor. And making fun of some things that I can't control makes me feel more better about it. So, oh. I lost it. There we go. All right, let's, let's continue. <laughs> I think the best thing to do is to just ask the person. Like, yeah. Like, what I could probably, I probably don't, not probably, I don't mind being called an autistic person, but if someone was like, please call me as a person with autism, then respect that. I think it's all just communication. Yeah, I still stand by that. It, I mean, my personality won't be, I don't know if my personality has changed all that much from November, but just ask. I, I remember when I was in the first Anthony Padilla interview, I went as I have autism because I didn't want it to rule me. I didn't want it to control me. Now I'm like, oh, God forbid you change your whole personality in four years and you're a different person from being 20 years old and now you're almost 25. No, but I used to say that I was a person with autism because I didn't want it to control me and I wanted to be in control of it. However, I've came to terms with the fact that my autism is going to control me no matter what. So now I say that I'm an autistic person because it doesn't really matter to me. That being said, I have there's a lot of other people that think very differently than me. And if you're a person with autism, if you're an autistic person who wants to be identified as an autistic person or a person with autism, ask. Just ask the person. I mean, in retrospect, I really would just prefer you call me Richie. <laughs> it's like, are you a person? So, what do I, what do I want? What do you want to call me? An autistic person? A person with autism? Call me Richie. Call me Richie. <laughs> My name is Richie. Like that's just that's that's the same thing. That's the same argument with gender. That's the same argument with sexuality. Do I use he him pronouns? She her pronouns? Just call me Richie. <laughs> okay. I feel like asking the person and because sometimes there's just not the awareness so it's sometimes at least I hope when people don't use like do it in a certain way it's with um malintent I am 95% sure that people aren't doing it with malintent no, I'm 60% sure that people aren't doing it with malintent I don't think I don't think people when it comes to uh one second I don't think when people are talking about um, you are a person with aut specifically with the person of autism argument, when people say you are a person of autism or you're an autistic person, I don't think anyone says that with ill intent. I think most of the time when people are talking about it, it's genuine, like, I don't know. So that's just my personal take on that. Um, I feel like it's about asking and with respect for the label that if you did it incorrectly, checking that it's correct, or at least the way the person wants to be addressed. Couldn't have said it better myself. Okay, this is from Dreamy Tea Party Princess. A lot of people see autism as a superpower. They only see our creative sides and not the meltdowns or sensory issues. I, I haven't checked uh, mm -hmm. if I was able to uh, climb on walls or anything or <laughs> scoop on. <laughs> If that's what autism gave me, then oof, please give me more. No, like, it's just not and at if all. You were okay, so I was told in the interview when I, we were at the assumption, like the table and stuff, that we're trying to have a conversation with each other. So I pretended that the cameras weren't there. And I was just talking to those three, to Jasmine and Aniela. Huh, excuse me. I was talking to Jasmine and Aniela um, personally. Um... So, I say this because I talk to people with humor. Most of the time, I'm really not serious. And it's really hard to have a moment where I am serious. Uh, because it's hard. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's hard to take serious topics and, and take a hold of it, you know? Excuse me. Um, so, 
when I say that, I, I usually joke around all the time. I know people were saying that I I was really sarcastic in this, um, but I didn't know that I, I couldn't tell that I was being sarcastic. And uh, even if I was, even if I could tell, I don't think I, that's just how I act. I, I, I make conversation. I make people laugh. That's my whole thing. I want to make people laugh. Put me on a try not to laugh, damn it. <laughs> I want to make people laugh. I have jokes. Please. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, it's just, um, um, what is it? What is it? Art I've never heard the assumption personally that autism was a superpower. Um, I did hear that people would say that I'm kind of savant. Saying that, oh, I'm autistic. I must be a genius. Which I I personally don't think I am. Uh, but if I, wa if I did believe I was a genius, it wouldn't have been... It wouldn't have been because I'm autistic. It would have been from other factors. All right, let's continue. In my hero academia, that's a super. I was about to talk about that, <laughs> mm -hmm. and I'm just like my quirk, autism. And I'm and just like I'm just, and, just and I'm just like I'm just like I'm just like I'm just like. Shut up! <laughs> Stop saying I'm just like. Why are you stuttering? <laughs> I, 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 I see, look, I'm stuttering now. What the fuck? Ah. It's differently. <laughs> like, all the exclamations under it. It's like, oh, I, I wanted super speed. Why'd, why'd I get this? <laughs> I do find it kind of funny if you're, like, selecting, like, you have your, let's just say you have, like, a hat in front of you and you're drawing superpowers and people have, like, super speed, super strength, x-ray vision, and I got autism. Fuck. <laughs> Like, ah, cool. Yeah, it's got super speed, and I just got autism. Cool. That, totally want that. The stream is still jittering, but it's fine. It's fine. Hold on, let me open up my, let me open up my phone. Oh, I have a, I have the new Samsung phone, because the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip, the S Flip 4. The, the the fold the fold for because I like I'm a I'm a tech geek I, I I like tech stuff um they didn't put it in the interview unfortunately but I talked about it I talked about how my favorite special interest was um was tech and soldering and wiring and stuff and I fixed uh, I fix uh handheld consoles before I can't do it right now because I am broke as hell but if I had money, I would love to do that. I can barely afford to pay my bills, let alone pay for my hobbies. I graduate in three weeks, though, so who knows? Who knows what I'll do after I graduate? If you want to donate, I have like a few days left until I have to finalize the, the film. So just just saying. Just saying if you want to help. No, but all honesty, um, I think it's just how it's... How you use, how you, uh, how you look at autism yourself, and how you uh, expand on it. I'd say autistics have. I don't know if I like that phrasing that I said. Um, I do think it is how you look at it, but I think I phrased it really poorly. I think it's only a superpower if you make it a superpower. Again, it's the whole you control your autism more than your autism controls you. It's that kind of argument. Superpowers, but there's a catch. That makes superpowers not even worth it anymore. <laughs> what would be the catch, in your opinion? Traumatic experience. Oh, <laughs> oh, no, oh you can second. fly, but uh, you have a you have a supervillain backstory, apparently. <laughs> right now, my memory goes back to two, but I... And my memory is super powerful, but that means I also remember... All the the worst things I don't want to remember. Sometimes those things just won't go away. I feel like it's the best the best thing to move, the best thing to do in those situations to move forward and uh, not moving on because sometimes people, sometimes just neurotypicals or divergents just can't do that. Yeah, I, I would say. Like, I agree. 
feel like there's a lot of things that people with autism who deal with autism gain. Um, for me, I... I've talked about a lot in the interview about my trauma. Um, yeah, I talked about my trauma pretty heavily in the interview uh, because I'm very transparent about it. I feel like I'm transparent about... I'm transparent about my mental health because I feel like it can help other people who have, who are lacking in their own mental health to speak to someone. Like if I am transparent, maybe other people can be transparent to let's say the therapist or the family, the doctors, the loved one, stuff like that, people like that. And, um, but I talked about my uh, trauma and I've learned, what I'm trying to say is I've learned from it. And I've learned that you won't be able to move on from trauma. At least with me. I will never be able to move on from trauma. I just gotta not let it control me. And not let it take a hold of me. And that's... I, I, I still stand by that. Where it's like, you won't be able to move on. But you can move forward. That's what I've been looking at it as. When I went to... Getting into college, I wrote one of my essays and I called a oh, weirdly again like autism as a, a gift because it gave me a really hard work ethic I have to work harder to get to where I am today with how my brain just functions or how I learn and understand things and in that sense I guess that gave me that kind of superpower if you want to call work ethic a superpower and not just from autism but um but I sometimes it does give you superpowers because you become a product of someone who has gone through a lot or has um, gone through um, handling different situations that maybe some other people don't. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I agree. I, um, like, she basically looked at her autism and used it to her benefit rather than to her detriment. So I do agree with it. That I do agree with her. And I, 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 Proud of her. Amanda Borhart 1000 says it's obvious that someone has autism and it's impossible that someone with normal behavior could be autistic. No. It's a black and white statement. Yeah. That's 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 saying that you either like so over here or you're so over here. I feel like sometimes I can uh Alrighty, one second. There we go. Sorry, I'm just looking through things right now. I was just looking at things. Um, yeah, it's a very black and white statement. That's... It, it's a spectrum. People act differently. Some people... Or low have low support needs, and some people have high support needs. That's how it works. Feel very, very like talkative, and on the other hand, other times I don't want to speak to anyone or anything. I wish yeah. people could tell that yeah. I'm autistic, so I dream. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that, and I don't know how to answer you. You when people. What sucks? What sucks about what Jasmine said is that. I feel for her. I personally think that regardless, people are going to treat us like shit. Like, it's either A, they can't tell, and uh, they treat us normally, and treating us normally would be really hard, because uh, that's not how our minds work. Or they, they do acknowledge that we have autism, and they treat us like walking on eggshells, and my... I, I talk about it later in the video, but my argument about ha having a handicap, um, it's it's primarily why I, a, a big reason why I didn't want a lot of people to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on other platforms solely because I was on Anthony Padilla or solely because I'm autistic. I work, I am an animator. I've worked on so much shit. 
I have a portfolio that spans pages. Spans four pages. Look at that. Go Subscribe to me for that. I don't want you subscribing or following me because I am autistic. You are giving me a handicap. And I'm going to post this on like my second channel. It's not done yet. I'm still editing it. But I've been working on... I've been working on... Uh, <sighs> I've been working on an autism documentary kind of like concept. And I interviewed some high profile autistic in, uh, influencers for it. And um, they said this, so they were saying the same thing. They were saying that they didn't want to be, they didn't want their content to be heavily focused around autism because people, that's not what they do. They do other stuff. And that's my logic about it. I am an animator. Follow me because I animate. I got four shows and I'm spending my own money on it. The least you could do is follow me for that. <laughs> and not for me sitting in a room talking about something that I've lived with my whole life. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If you have to subscribe to me, do it for one and not the other. People say you don't look autistic or, yeah, I can tell you autistic. I, I don't know. Is, is that an insult? Is that a compliment? Thank you. Uh, thank you for telling me that I don't look autistic. I think it's, a, now that I'm thinking about it, I think it's more of an, it's an insult both ways. I think that either if you say you don't look autistic, you're a bad person for having an inherent stereotype on what an autistic person looks like or acts like. Because uh, it's like, you don't seem autistic. That means you know what an autistic person, you think you know what an autistic person acts like. Or, you say, I do look autistic, and you already put me into your stereotype classifications. So either way, you're a piece of shit. Just don't say that. Just don't say the statement. Don't say, I look or don't look like I have autism. That's what I'm trying to say now. I didn't say this in the interview, but either way, you're fucked up if you say it. Just don't say it. Just don't say it. Just don't say it. Guys. It's so difficult because it's, yes, sometimes you do need the help, and um, sometimes it's great not to get the assumption when it doesn't appear physically or by the behavior that you don't have autism, but it's... What is physically? How can you feel... No, I'm not, this is not against Aniela, but how can someone tell physically that they have autism? What the, I don't remember autism being a pheno, being a phenotype. It it it's primarily genetic. It's primarily genetic. It wouldn't. I don't think it'd be like a physical. I mean, I guess if it's with your brain, it is a phenotype. It's not something you can physically see. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's also. Dangerous because again, you don't know what the person's gone through and what um, what they're dealing with or what they're thinking. Yeah. When it's mm -hmm. more with like how you think, how you behave, and yeah, it's, yeah. it gets tricky when someone thank you, says stuff like that. Where it's, um, <laughs> thank you. When me. you can't see it, it's it's difficult. People should stop self-diagnosing through TikTok. This question was hard to answer, but I still wanted to talk about it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this question was so hard to answer because I feel like if put if I say something wrong, if I say something wrong here, I'm going to be alienating a lot of people because my boyfriend is, um, I actually don't, I, my boyfriend, um, from my knowledge could be autistic. I think that's on him to get the diagnosis and him to tell his story. I don't want to be the one to put words in his mouth. So we have talked about it, though. Um, when people are self-diagnosing themselves, they're not, like, looking on TikTok and being like, yep, I'm autistic. It's kind of like when you see your... F I, I, I like to attribute it to you see your friends... And you and your friends have a lot in common, and they have autism. And you're like, huh, I act pretty similar to you. Let me look into and see if I have autism based on what you, what I saw from you. 
So then I do my own research, and then I realize, oh, I am autistic. Personally, with me, I am diagnosed autistic. I was diagnosed when I was uh, late three, early four. I didn't speak till I was four, but that's when I was diagnosed. Um, so I unfortunately did not grow up in a time where TikTok or YouTube put a spotlight on autistic people, autistic creators. So it was all through medically, which I feel for my boyfriend because... Yeah, that's that's tough. That's tough to go through that. <laughs> so this was a question I was hard to answer because I didn't want to. On one hand, I don't want people to be looking at TikTok and be like, yep, I'm autistic, and that's it. I don't think it's that easy, and I don't think people are like that. However, on the other hand, the health system sucks, and I feel like people are going to be misgen uh, not misgendering, are going to be misdiagnosing all the time. So, you can do your own assessment. I still think you should get diagnosed. But if you do do your if you do your own assessment and you come to terms with you the, with the fact that you are self diagnosed autistic, that's fine too. You are perfectly fine as well. I don't think you can easily just self diagnose yourself on TikTok and call it a day. And I don't think that's what people are doing. I don't think um, autism is a trend. I don't think autism is trending. I think people are being more vocal about the fact that they have autism. And the reason why self-diagnosing, uh, self-diagnosis and autism is on the rise is because so ma the health system is really screwed up. Like, it's really hard for someone to be able to just easily get you it. You see that? You see that? That's how you can tell that I was sick. <laughs> just the... <laughs> get a diagnosis and even after that some people get false diagnosis some people can be labeled as autistic with or not or in other word in, or in the other way you're labeled a completely different disability as opposed to autism or what it really is yeah to me i think if you're autistic you have you should seek professional help i, mean, I agree it too. took three therapy sessions for me i do agree with that too like as even if you do the research and you do come to terms and come to the conclusion that you are autistic, you should still get diagnosed. You shouldn't call it a day. You should keep fighting for the fact that you could be autistic. Granted, if you were a minor, that would be harder, but you should keep pushing for that. I need to, for someone to discover that I was autistic, and help is out I love there. The I don't think you should do it alone. Jasmine's but it is, ex it is awesome. very expensive, though. Yeah. And it, it's really, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's kind of sad. It's kind of sad to believe that, that like you have to spend thousands of thousands of dollars just for yeah. someone to tell you, yeah, you're right. You have autism. Give me money. That's, That's really not. Yeah. A, it's not as simple as that. I especially like I've dealt with it. I'm borderline poverty, so I am borderline poverty. I. I'm only able to survive in school because of student loans and financial aid. But, um, so, like, in my specific situation, it'll be really hard for me to... It'll be really hard for me to get medical help that, in that regard. So I can only imagine what other people are going through, regardless of their status. Autistic children should have AIDS with them at all times. Uh, what's the difference? This comet never leaves me. <laughs> I'm always gonna have AIDS. <laughs> that that's just how it is. That's I'm known as the AIDS guy. That that one part is like the most viewed in the previous interview. I'm stuck with that joke. <laughs> Fuck you, South Park. <laughs> Different word. I have AIDS. Monitor. I don't. The I don't want to say. Never leaves me. I don't want to say it like that. I wanna... Okay, I'm gonna skip that part because it's a lot. Children need personal assistance with them at all times during school. I think that it really depends on the autistic person because I know you were talking about how you had IEP and like it really helped you a bit uh, growing up. But like with me, on the other hand, I was one of those people that actively resented wanting IEP or uh, or AIDS in this case. Um, that's wrong. That's a wrong thing that I said. It's not. 
IEP and AIDS are two separate things. They're completely, they are, I think they're under the same educational plan, but they're two separate. I got, I had an, I had a perf, uh, personal assistant, um, through a different, uh, health program. Um, and even though they, I think they cut it out, like, I believe I said it, but they cut it out. I did have IEP. I was able to turn in assignments later. I was able to leave class to go to a different room and take a test there. It was difficult though because like we talk about it later when it comes to sensory issues and sensory overloads. Um, we talk about it later in the video about sensory issues and sensory overloads and um, I was talking about how like it's not loud noises that startle me, but it's constant loud noises. So, for example, if a horn, ble if like a car alarm goes off, that doesn't bother me. But if it continues to go off, it bothers me. It's the same thing with complete silence. And what a lot of places would do is that they will uh, put me in complete silence to take the test and that would make things just as bad S the best like when i'm at work i have like a an earpiece a headphone in to block out to block out certain sounds while i'm doing other tasks because i am autistic and that the only problem is is just that it's not medically in my file i don't have like a medical note that says i need that it's just it's genuinely helps me so when it comes to this, despite the fact that I had IEP, I did not want to use it. The same reason why I didn't want a lot of people subscribing to me because I'm autistic. It's primarily because, it's primarily because, like, I feel like you are giving me a handout. You're giving me a handicap, and I don't feel like I can do things on my own. That's my primary reason as to why I, I do that. So, because, like... I don't need help. I can get to where I want to be by myself. But I got this far. I got this far. <laughs> I I got so many characters now. I've been on so many YouTube channels. I've done an interview with Anthony Padilla twice. I've gotten this far. I don't think I need other stuff. I, I can make it. I can make it. So it's really a case-by-case -case basis on who the person is. Yeah, I agree. So I was diagnosed when I was 13. So there was a me before AIDS and a me after AIDS. And so <laughs> AIDS stay with you for the rest of your life. Before I had it's the assistance. It's, it's a medical candy. Did you guys know that? <laughs> Did you guys know that AIDS is a medical candy? It's like everyone needs AIDS. It's like, oh, I love AIDS. And uh, yeah, it's um, unfortunately they, they discontinued that because... Take a lucky guess. <laughs> Take a lucky guess what epidemic caused um, people to not want to buy a candy that says AIDS on the package. <laughs> following me around the school, my disability was invisible. After the assistants started following me around the school, my disability turned visible. And so I think that was a problem. It's like having a neon sign that just says... I did notice that I was more bullied when my aide wasn't around me than when she was. So, yeah, that that's an unfortunate thing to think about. I just I just realized that as we're talking about this. Hey, look at me. I'm autistic. Something's yeah, different. Like, why are <laughs> these guards these following this woman <laughs> around all the time? She must be special needs. I lost my aid in sixth grade. After sixth grade, I was pretty much on my own. They said that I graduated from it, which, honestly, I kind of was relieved. Like, let's be real, I didn't really want the aid, but, eh. And it's frustrating because it, it brings on the tag of, um, we're not capable. Yeah. Because yeah. we are. It's, maybe we need, a, there's not, we don't have aids right now. <laughs> like, yeah. we don't need someone's help every single step of the way maybe on step one or um but not the whole way women can't be on i yeah and yella her words were really powerful in this interview in this uh video 
Um, yeah, some people just need help. It's okay to ask for help. That's just what an autistic person is. The next topic is is women can't be autistic. I'm going to skip over that one because I am not a woman. I'm not a woman and, uh, I mean, I am a female, but I'm AMAB, which if you don't know what AMAB and AFAB, it means uh, at, uh, assigned male at birth and assigned female at birth. And while I am AMAB, I am AMAB. So even though I label myself with they, them, she, her pronouns, I can't really, I can't really speak on this one because I didn't grow up as a female and it would be wrong for me to talk about this as if I know how it feels to be a female. So yeah, I, I'm going to skip over this point. You could watch the video on Anthony Padilla's channel, but, but yeah. I'm going to play this point, though, in its entirety because I feel like my stance is still the same. I don't, I'm going to play it in its entirety and then talk about it after. Queer community, it's like also people who aren't there. Boys or girls can have autism, too. Yeah. Most queer or trans people are autistic. It's yours. Um, <laughs> this one is for Richie. I've had this conversation multiple times about why people why a lot of autistic people come out as trans and non-binary because i started thinking about why some people uh, transition that way and why mm -hmm. they go into uh becoming trans and being non-binary being them true their true selves and i started realizing that because we have such social issues or at least with me because we have such social issues yeah. and we don't like to conform with society and think of how society think basically everything that we do is a non-factor in society and it's all about how we feel and how who we are. So with me, I just, I hate, I knew I wasn't a girl, but I hated being labeled as a guy. Well, that and, changed. Um, I'm, non -binary I am just also seemed a to fit the most because it made me feel like I can be myself and my true self is the only thing that matters. As in my gender, what I wear, who I am, should not matter. All that matters is my character, my personality, and non-binary. Uh, me being non-binary has made me the happiest I have ever been. Who I knows? Agree. Maybe I'll be. Maybe I'm actually not non-binary, and I'm gonna transition to a different, different gender. I'm that. That's the human nature. But I'm just. I feel like people trans. Uh, a lot of autistic people transition. I am going to stop there really quick. Hi, Ion. I am going to stop there really quick because I know people gave me shit for that comment. Mostly the bigots. It's because I said, who knows, maybe I won't be autistic. That's just the human nature. People gave me shit for that. And I want to clarify what I meant by that. It's the human nature to question yourself, to question your life and question who you are. Not to transition genders. I mean... Transitioning genders comes with questioning who you are and who who you are, what you do, where it comes from. That uh that comes from the that comes from you questioning yourself and that alone comes from human nature. So when I said that transitioning when I said that I didn't mean transitioning is the human nature. Excuse me. I meant questioning who you are is the human nature. It's just that transitioning comes with that. And because they think about themselves first and foremost, and this is what I think of myself. I am non-binary, and I'm pretty f happy about it. I'm more happy. I'm really happy about being non-binary. It feels so good to wear a skirt with a shirt that I with a guy shirt or wear some khakis and have like one of those shirts that show your shoulder. Like it feels good not having to care. It feels great not having to care about about it. Now I gotta learn how to do my own makeup. Me and my boyfriend are trying to move together and get our own place. Um, but unfortunately I'm still poverty stricken right now. So maybe when me and him move together we can kind of like we can figure that out. Got it. Being autistic automatically makes someone socially inept. I'm pretty bad socially. <laughs> Not automatically. Yeah. 
I am so talkative. Like, you guys can hear me. Like, you guys have seen. I've stretched... Uh, like, I've done rap battle um, breakdowns on stream before of videos that I've animated. I've, tre I've stretched out a three-minute video for two hours. Yes, I do talk a lot. That, that, that happens. Yeah, I, I get socially inept sometimes, but when someone starts talking about what I do... I can go on for days and talk about things. It's almost like I similar agree. to the other symptoms. When people more care about what I, I want to talk like, about. It's like, it's a, sometimes it's an unfair assumption because um, it's something that you could always work on. Like, yeah, maybe I, I do feel like I have a harder time developing relationships, developing friendships, and then especially, like, how do I maintain my... I'm still shocked that I have a partner. <laughs> I'm going to gush about my boyfriend real quick. Um... <laughs> I met my boyfriend online on a dating app and I was I was ready to hang up the towel I was ready to hang up the towel before meeting him because I was like I tried matching with guys and all these guys uh, only want me for my body and I tried matching with girls, but they looked at me and my masculinity, and they weren't, they were very much a female, like the stereotypical female. Um, it was really hard to find someone that clicked. So when I found my boyfriend, before, before I met my boyfriend, I was ready to hang it up. And then I went on a date with my boyfriend, and... We, we went to this bar. Uh, it was her mom's boyfriend's like open mic night. And we walked outside. I looked at the stories and I told her about my fascination on what's out there. On the world. I told her my fascination on the uncertain. Because while I am scared of the unknown. I am also really fascinated by it. On how we genuinely don't know what's out there. And we can put a bunch of things in our heads about it. And come to our own conclusions. And she listened. She listened the entire time. I talked about something I was really interested in. And she listened to me. I think the, the inciting incident that made me realize that I love her was when I broke down about my when I broke down about my personal trauma cuz for those who don't know I am P I have PTSD and I broke down about my personal trauma and um honey I'm sorry for putting you on blast a bit she cried she cried with me I've never met someone just in general just period where someone can emotionally be on the same level as you and um and that was the moment where i realized yeah i'm going to marry this person i'm going to marry this person Hey, Robot Richie, how did today go for you? It went great! Thank you for asking! Thank you for stopping by! I never really had a lot of faith in dating apps, though I figured I can give it a try in the summer. Maybe look for friends first and see if there are more connections other than dating apps. I wouldn't go on a dating app if you're looking for a friendship. Um, if you want to find friendships, go on Bumble BFF. That would be the best option, I think. Um, but that moment made me realize that I wanted to be that I love her. Now the moment that said that I want to marry her was when I was filming my senior thesis in in February. Cuz I know I've talked about wanting to get married prior, but I always had a bit of uncertainty because I'm 24. I'm young. When I cry, I cried in front of my crew after we filmed my senior thesis. Which, by the way, you can still donate if you click on the link in the description below. We have the gold, like, I think, right here on that side. The point is, it's just, 
I cried because I find I like this is my culmination. I've been in school for six years, and I was um, and I was ready to drop out because I could not afford it anymore. And I fought for months. I fought for years to stay in school, and now all of that work paid off, and I'm graduating next month, less than a month away. That's why the senior thesis project and just people subscribing and watching my stuff means a lot to me because this is something that I've been working on for my whole life. And when I cried to see my dreams come true, she cried with me. And while everyone was packing up and putting the, the equipment away, the expensive cameras, me and her went into a different room at in at the set. I held her and I just bawled. And she was tearing up with me. That made me realize that I want to marry. I want to marry her. Um, unfortunately, I can't right now. I don't have the money for a ring or anything like that. And even if I did, I still have my own bills and stuff to take care of. So, I'm going to have to put that on a hold. I mean, granted, I could ask without... I could ask without having, like, a ring. But I'm one of those people that like to make a memorable impression. But... Yeah, I... That made me realize I want to marry her. Um, the whole reason why I went on this whole tirade and this whole conversation, the reason why I brought all this up was because, yeah, I am socially inept. It took me two and a half years to find a loving relationship, and I have one of the most healthy relationships I've ever been in. Ever. Like, just period. Friends, family, one of the most healthy relationships, just period. And... I now have this status where people know my name and know Robot Richie, Robo Rebellion Studios. They know me. And I want to give my partner some of that. I want my partner to be up here with me. And if I do have my own studio, I want her to have her own business. We could be an autistic... We could be autistic business owners. I don't know. I just... The point is, I am socially inept. But I can, you can make it work. You can find love. You can find friendships. You can find whatever you set your mind to. I do graduate in three weeks though, so donate. It helps pay the people who helped me in the, stu in the set. My socialism in a work environment when there's certain etiquette in place. Um, I know she said socialism. You guys, you guys could read between the lines. She meant like, her talking, she does. She doesn't mean like clap, like Marxism and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it, it, instilling my, you know, my my communist ideology. No, she's not a communist. <laughs> um, and communism and socialism are different. The point is, she's not talking about <laughs> socialism like the political party. She's talking about her, how she interacts. At least to my knowledge, maybe she is socialist. I, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I don't want to put words in her mouth. And it is harder. I, I feel like I do have to think about that stuff sometimes, and I don't mean to be offensive, but um, I, I feel like it is fair to say that it, it sometimes is harder, but I, I feel like it's still we could still carry ourselves in society. And um, yeah, yeah, I agree. I am, I am it's just a... maybe harder. Autism is just being a little bit quirky. Just a little quirky. I don't know what that means. I, I, like, like honestly, I, I, I do know what that means, but I don't know what the assumption is behind that. Because, like, do they think autism is just, like, like, a, like a, a quirky, like, being quirky? I don't know. Ah, uh, you know, just being a, a little quirky, you know. Just, just a bit. Just a, just it's a bit. Totally not. It, it's this. It's this. It's just it's, yeah. it's this. It's not like the brain wires are coiled up or anything. I mean, that's not what autism is. Yeah, so I have lots of quirks but autism is not one big quirk so 
I have a few quirks. So, for example, uh, hmm, what do I do? I bunny hop. I walk like a dog. I make animal noises all the time. I like to keep my arms like this because it's comfortable. That's that's nice. Like that's that's just that's that's just charming. That's just that's just endearing. I have some quirks myself, which if you look very carefully, you can see me doing stuff like, or you'll see some of that. I do those all the time. And also I crack my knuckles, but I'm like this a lot. And I play with something that's in my hands. If you call those quirks. And I embarrass my mommy all the time. <laughs> I do like to sometimes like have something to do. So I, so people were saying in the comments that we were, that that every about masking and we'll talk about that later but this is how i mask when i do this that means that i'm holding myself together in a social situation and trying to keep myself from fidgeting but like while i'm on stream i'm gonna fidget all i want to do with my fingers when it's like this is, i don't know if it's just like i need something to do with my fingers it's like, I guess it's like something just the brain and then just goes that and then it's like, well, yeah, I'm quirky, but is there anything wrong with that? I feel like non-autistic people also have quirks. It's not, yeah. I mean, maybe uh, autistic people, Here's there's my a quirks. higher, <laughs> I don't know, higher percentage autism people have quirks. That's an, endearing, that's an endearing quirk. I know someone in the comments talked about how they thought that Jasmine was holding her quirks in because I was getting bothered by it. No, of course not. I I, lo I love Jasmine. I love Aniela. They're both awesome people. Like, why would I be bothered by someone's quirks? Come on. <laughs> but, but I do appreciate Jasmine. I do appreciate if Jasmine was trying to hold it in the consideration of oh, how I w how I would feel. But I didn't have a problem with it. I thought it was fine. But I. It's like, there's nothing wrong with a quirk. All people with autism face sensory issues. Yeah. Yeah. I talked about my sensory issues. I don't like it when it's too quiet. I don't like apples and chocolate because of the texture. Oh, at least for me. I don't know about anyone else, but... With me, I do feel sensory issues. Um, shockingly, it's not just loud noises. It's constant loud noises, but it's most of my sensory issues come from taste and touch. Uh, styrofoam scares the ever loving shit out of me. I... Yeah, it still does. It still does. Autism is completely invented, reinventing a new science in your world building or art thing and having entire flow charts dedicated to them. I mean, I made a religion. <laughs> like, when I created animated the series, I didn't realize until I finished recording all the scripts that I'm like, I created a religion. <laughs> I created an entire religion. <laughs> and I didn't even realize that until it act until I, it, I, I finished recording and and paying everyone. I'm like, wow, I did create a religion. You'll guys see that in episode three, which comes out in May. I mean, yeah. I feel like this is why they're in horror films, but yeah. I cannot stand the sound of a wind chime when it's supposed to be quiet. It's a spectrum. Autism is a spectrum because I know she doesn't like wind chimes. I love wind chimes. I find them very calming and I find them very soothing. Like imagine just being outside you're hearing wind chimes and you're hearing like the soft wind blowing on a nice summer day. I love that. I, I love I love that a lot. Um, so it just shows how the spectrum is so vast and not at all similar. It, and With me, it goes off. It's What's, like a my my ears will just. Uh, I'm sensitive to like the way certain fabrics feel on your skin and the way certain textures of food. My boyfriend hates velvet. <laughs> My boyfriend does not like velvet. I love velvet. So I think she also doesn't like touch. Like the touch senses. Feel in your mouth. Like if I don't yeah. like the texture of the food, bleh. Yeah, I don't like apples and I don't like chocolate for those specific reasons. Cause I don't like pure chocolate, but I've started to like uh, peanut butter chocolate. 
Well, um, not the coat in your mouth. There needs to be a balance of peanut butter and chocolate. Unironically, I'm not saying this because he's a YouTuber, but Mr. Beast Feastables, the peanut butter flavor surprisingly is one of my favorite chocolates. <laughs> like unironically, I like the crunch too, but it's cause those texture. It's it's not an entirely coat your mouth experience. There's textures in both of them, and the peanut butter balances the chocolate. Apples, I, I can't. I can't any apple thing. Because chocolate coats the roof of your mouth and it feels disgusting. I can't. Apples have like that skin. You see me doing those stims, like the the twitching my head stims on it. And it's gotten to a point where every time I eat anything apple flavored, I'm just reminded of the skin and... I don't like the, the skin. skin. <laughs> whipped cream, whipped cream, it's gross. Even in my hands. Whipped cream is gross? That shocked me because I like whipped cream. But again, that's how the spectrum works. It's completely different. Like, she doesn't like whipped cream. I do. Like, that's perfectly fine. Everyone works differently. It's gross. I mean, that's just bad. Just throw me hand soap. Just throw that stuff. I hate the... Yeah, th that's... <laughs> that I feel like, I mean, yeah, if I'm in a horror movie with the sound sensory thing, I'll, I will, like, cover my ears when I can tell there's about to be a jump Yeah, thing. I'm like this. I'm like this. I'm trying to watch more horror films. I hate horror for two reasons. One, because it's extremely loud and it's very sensory overloading. Um, um, two, I just find a lot of horror films repetitive. And they bug the crap out of me for that. Um, I don't like gore for the sake of being gore. Like, Saw bugs the crap out of me. I hate Saw. I do not like that franchise. Scream, however. Scream is a really fun franchise. Because, um... Because it is freaky. It is scary. But it's also a commentary on toxic fan culture. And I, it's a parody in and of itself, but it's also like a really compelling story in and of itself. And I love that. With apples, I kind of just eat the entire thing, minus the stem or some of the se and some of the seeds, if I can help it. I mean, I would imagine you're not eating the stem. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, I eat the entire apple whole. I don't bite it. I'm just like... <laughs> Uh, let me continue. <laughs> I, I try not to do horror movies I anymore. I can nails on a chalkboard, but God forbid if someone brings out the cornstarch. <laughs> I know that was an, a lot of people commented about the cornstarch one. Honestly, at this time, I was watching like this, this like my strange addiction was someone was eating cornstarch, and I heard the sound, and I'm just like, uh. It almost made me not want to use cornstarch in cooking because it was absolutely disgusting. <laughs> and that made people laugh because they agreed. <laughs> when someone brings out the cornstarch, I've seen videos where people are eating cornstarch and I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Oh, I hate the cornstarch. I agree. Feelings. What it's is like, wrong I, with I, you? I, I use cornstarch in cooking because I love cooking, but like, gotta dilute it first. Like, oh my God. I had someone say that they feel like they really misunderstood the feeling of sensory issues. Can y'all just get into like what the immediate feeling is? Like if you touch your bare foot to the floor or you Anger. you I I twitch, like I'm like I Bleh. yeah. Yeah, I still twitch. Like two days ago, me and me and my boyfriend went to uh Taco Bell and and like it was really cold. All right, I need to get groceries. I need spaghetti. See you guys. Bye. Thank you for... S oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on, Iron. One second. Uh, you're going to be my mod. You're going to be my moderator. You're going to be one of my mods. Um. Uh, what was I trying to say? I, um... I twitch. Like, I was... Uh, I opened the window because we were in the drive-thru... And just a small gust of wind hit my arm, and I immediately went like that. My boyfriend looked at me, and he's just like, are you okay? Is that, is, is that, is that a, the sensory stuff? And I'm like, yeah, just got cold all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I feel like when I'm hearing, like, a band, and it's, like, just a little bit too loud, and the vibrance, like, my eyes will just, like, 
This is me and my boyfriend carry earplugs with us to band to a concert. Is it? Is this British, a, with, not, like is the this... sound and it's like, yeah. yeah. Sorry. No, as soon as I get this burning rage, if I hear something I don't want to hear, like background noise for a long period of time, I would want to literally jump off a cliff. Like, I'm a little like, I'm filled with so much rage. I, I have to put headphones hear, on. Yeah. You can hear me interrupt. And it's not because I was trying to interrupt. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't tell when a conversation's ending or when a conversation's starting. So I try and I'm not trying to interrupt when I do that. It's just I genuinely like can't tell. <laughs> Yeah, I get frustrated and I, I want to do something about it and hmm. I try to fix it by like yeah. the headphones. Or... I hope this isn't going to be fuel for us. I hope we're not going to be walking around and someone's bringing... I'm going to skip this part. But basically I just said I hope it's not going to be fuel for us and I'm just like, bring it on. I'll take you on. Bring out the styrofoam. Do they think I'm doing it? Autistic people lack empathy. Can you explain? I'm going to skip over this because uh, uh, I want to talk about it just in person. Um, the assumption was autistic people lack empathy. With me, I don't lack empathy. It's just the fact that I can't tell when someone's going through an emotion like that. Um, I always ask my boyfriend if he cried, if he's crying when he's not. Because I see, like, glistens in his eyes, which is, they're beautiful. But, like, I see glistens in his eyes, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're shiny. You must be crying. Then that's not the case. Um... No, but I can't tell. That's why I've gotten better at focusing on body language more than physical, more than, like, emotion. So whenever I see someone, like, by themselves, I try and go up to them. It, 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 it's a whole thing. You need to be able to tell if someone's going through stuff. Autistic people have a hard time dating. I, I'm just going to skip this one, too. Um, but, yeah, we basic, I basically talked about my current partner, and how it took me a long time to find my new partner. And the previous relationship out and before him was extremely toxic. Um, on both fronts. I was questioning my sexuality. And they were a hardcore Christian. So, yeah, that alone is recipe for disaster. And I was transitioning. Now, I was, like, changing my sexuality. Because I genuinely didn't know. So... So yeah, that was that was a big thing, and um, it was really hard to find a relationship. And again, I already said this earlier, but I was about to throw in the towel if it wasn't for my boyfriend. So, yay! Thank you, boyfriend, for pulling through. I, I feel like dating is hard for anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but dating is hard for anyone. It's not including us. Any kind, dating included. It People are innocent, holier than thou, pure beings with no sexual desires or any idea. You can see us getting. <laughs> you can see us tense up a bit. <laughs> honestly, honest. Uh, <laughs> you can see us like tense up a bit. Huh. We got so uncomfortable. It was so funny. I'm not going to speak on my experiences. I will ex I will speak on just a lot of genuine comments that I saw people who have autism talk about. A lot of people are freaks. <laughs> a lot of people are very comfortable of being extremely sexually promiscuous. I guess is the best way of phrasing it. And all power to them. I kind of agree that like when it comes to sexual a sexual nature um because a lot of autistic people are more in tone with their sexuality, they would ex they would do a lot more experimenting. And they wouldn't shy, usually a lot of autistic people wouldn't shy away from things that a lot of people would do. That's why you have a lot of people who are both extremely kinky. Or, I don't like saying the word kinky. Or who are extremely sexually promiscuous. Or people who outright hate sex. 
um, or, or aromantic or asexual because it's just they're very comfortable with the sexuality in those regards. But I'm going to skip over this because this was an embarrassing conversation. I assume people with autism struggle with tone. I can't understand yeah. sarcasm for the life of me. How I execute sarcasm is I am like completely dramatic in it. Like, for example, when someone gets me, let's say, a can of soup for Christmas, I'm like, oh, thanks. <laughs> like, I would really like. Ex yeah, I'm very dramatic when I'm trying to establish sarcasm. If I'm not doing that, that means I. That means I'm trying. That either means I'm just trying to joke around and I didn't consider it sarcastic, or no, I'm dead serious. Um. If you guys can't tell, I'm a loud motherfucker. That alone should tell you that I have an issue with tone sometimes. I'm going to skip to a lot of this. Oh, vaccines cause autism. Oh, my God, people. You anti-vaxxers. So many people. The anti-vaxxers came out of the woodworks. I, um... But I think it causes childhood trauma. That's not as dumb as a vaccine. This one is people are autistic because of childhood trauma. But that's still pretty. It's yeah, because the core of it is from you, not. I actually talked deeper about my childhood trauma. They cut it out in the video, but I talk about when I was sexually assaulted. I've talked about being sexually assaulted multiple times, and it's gonna be a little serious when I talk about this. So if you're if you're triggered by any of this stuff. I would click off from this point on because I will be talking not like thoroughly about it, but I will be talking about just the concept of what happened. Um, three, two, one. All right. So, yeah, I am very vocal about me. Uh, me have been I have been sexually assaulted uh, a, a, a quite a bit of times. And I didn't know that the situ. I feel like the autism was the reason where had a point in me not understanding what was happening until it happened. The first time, I was way too young to get it. And I just didn't know what I was feeling, and I cried. But I still didn't say it because I was told that if I said anything, I won't be able to see them anymore, and it's a lot. Um, and the second time, I was, I was drunk. I was drunk. And I woke up not knowing what was going on. And they told, and both of my friends told me what happened, and they were not drunk. Let's just say I'm not friends with them anymore. Um, but I would say a lot of people who have like sexual assault happen to them who are autistic. It'll be a lot harder for them to speak out about it. It'll be a lot harder for us to speak out about it, and it's a lot. I get nervous when I'm when I'm around people also because it's just, I don't want repeats or I don't want to be assumed that I would do the same back. So it's just it's just really hard. Um, even with my boy even when I'm with my boyfriend, if I want to hug him, I would like give some kind of physical indicator like I'd put my hands out, I'd ask, "Can I have a hug? Can I have a kiss?" Or some kind of like pure consensual physical or verbal communication because I'm still scarred about that. But even if we take away the, the, the sexual assault trauma, I've been homeless. I've been neglected before growing up. I've been abused growing up. And I, it's part of the reason why I'm very like vocal about my uh, mental health and my personal experiences because... A lot of people go through a lot, and I do not want someone to hide the fact that they have been assaulted or abused or neglected because the autism kind of hides them into a corner. So I, I, I hope to be the voice that helps people speak out more about their experiences. Watching this part is kind of hard for me, so I'm going to skip over, over it. But, yeah, it it's tough. It, it's really tough. I'm not going to lie. It's just, that's partially why I have PTSD, just from all the stuff that I've been through. And, 
I've had episodes before. It's it's hard for me to sleep sometimes. It's a lot. I'm not trying to say this because of sympathy points. I I don't want pity points or anything. This is my own journey that I'm working with my therapist right now on. I say these things and I'm vocal about it, not because I'm trying to preach to everyone, not because I want people to feel sorry for me, but because I want people to speak out on their own experiences. And if I do it, maybe someone else can do it in some way, shape, or form. If I do it to you guys, maybe someone else could speak to their therapist, or they could speak to their doctors, they could speak to their friends, their loved ones, and they could be more open about that. That's why I'm open about my experiences, but I would never wish this upon anyone. Masking is a useful skill for autistic people. We kind of have no choice. I talk about this. I talk about this in the video. We have. (laughs) I feel like it's a survival mechanism. Yeah, like, like we kind of have no choice. We learn that like someone doesn't react well to me, like not looking someone in the eye or um, just not understanding a specific etiquette that maybe I just don't know or I'm like, my brain isn't processing like everyone else. And then, um, so then I know I my survival, like your brain kicks in and it's like, I need to do this so I can um, survive or I can get through the next conversation. If, if I didn't mask, I wouldn't be able to have a job because I'm a barista I, I I work as a barista I it I have to mask like it's really hard for me to speak out and to be myself um when it comes to it's partially why I forgive me I know I, it's gonna sound weird for me to say this but I do want to have my own studio I do want to work in the YouTube industry because I feel like I can be my truest self in the industry and um, when I'm working on my own stuff, I can be my truest self. I do have ideas on wanting to make my own charity organization and give back. Uh, I, I have dreams of wanting to be able to have enough money where I can give other autistic people who want to go into the arts industry um, grants to help them out pay for college and stuff like that. Um, so I, I, I wish I'd be able to be in a position where I can help people out. And I wish I was in a position where I can make my own shows and make my own content because I won't have to mask. I can just be my true self. But as much as I don't mind being a barista, it's so hard. It's so hard to be myself and focus. It, it's stressful. It's, it's tough. I, 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 it's hard for me to focus like that. Sometimes I just want to have my own thing, you know? It's just, I would love to be known as my own entity, my own character. I feel like anyone wants that sense of individuality. But also, it helps me not mask by having my own individuality. That takes so much out of me at the end of the day. Not even because of the customers, but just overall trying to pretend that I have don't have something. Yeah. Thankfully, I got into a leadership position, so I'm able to control, uh, I'm able to have a, a reign on what I do and what everyone else does. And having that more sense of autonomy helps me out a lot. And I try to have the people who I'm like, my crew, my uh, fellow baristas, my, my co-workers who work under me, but also work with me. Um, I also want them to, like, I also want them to be comfortable because I wouldn't want me, if I don't want me to be in a certain position, I wouldn't want them to be in it if they don't want it either. So I'll take one for the team if they don't want to. Um, Because it's one of those things you have to do when you're a leader. You make sacrifices. Yes. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. If I want to get taken seriously at work because I'm in a very high... Uh, position I have to act normal <laughs> I don't think I've been taken seriously at any job I don't think I've been taken seriously at any job the only thing the only time I've been taken seriously is when I do YouTube it would be really nice if I can make YouTube a full-time thing right now it's not possible but I could be my truest self on YouTube and you know, just it'll be nice. But deep down, I'm not. 
And so when they get home, I just start running around like a dog on all fours and <laughs> Autistic people should disclose their autism when applying for jobs. I'm going to skip to this part and skip it. Mm. This is good. I'm going to skip that part. But basically, I talk about me wearing autism like a badge of honor. Because it doesn't matter. I have autism. People are going to look at me differently no matter what. I can either hide it and people just guess it. People just guess or I don't hide it and I own up to it. And I feel like owning up to it is a much better skill for me. So that's the assumptions video. I want to go into the comments real quick before we call it a day. I was going to animate on here, but I got laundry day. So I want to go into the comments and just really talk about and really talk about some popular things that I'm hearing that I see in the comments below. Yeah, see, it's not human nature to transition to gen to transition gender. Yeah. Yeah, I I wasn't trying to get across that I'm transitioning gender was uh the human nature. So I'm sorry if I went off like went went that route. Um, I was trying to say that human nature it's human nature to be questioning yourself and who you are. Uh, the autistic people who can't talk appreciate. I did see a lot of comments about people talking about. I did see a lot of comments from a lot of people talking about how they wanted more people who are not super vocal, who are like the nonverbal autistic people on here, and they can use other systems. I agree to an extent, but I also think that would be kind of hard. That'd be kind of hard to put on a neurotypical. Um, because just because other autistic people will be, would be fine talking to a nonverbal autistic does not mean neurotypicals would be able to. And it's also wrong to have someone immediately adapt to us. It takes time. And I feel like that would be like way too hard for someone to be able to handle that's not that wouldn't be able to get it now if someone else Anthony Padilla or other channel has like has like the resources there for nonverbal autistic people to be able to communicate with each other I would say that'd be a better option but just as is that might be tricky I, I, I don't know Excuse me. Again, let me know. Please feel free to correct me if I'm saying, if I say something out of line. Let's see, let's see. Richie touched up on this, but I want to clarify a bit because I'm not sure if the phrasing was the best. I have trouble phrasing as well, so I get it. Autistic people are not self centered people who are always concerned with only themselves. We look inward, we introspect, and I think it is related to a lot of things. Including the higher probability of identifying with LGBT. <clears throat> but I also know this also affects a lot of other things as well. A lot of people don't look inward. A lot of people don't ask themselves why they do things or why they are what they, what they represent. I think with autistics, as an autistic person myself, we just look inward more and th than the average person. So we know more of who we are than most people. And coupling that already with sort of being an outcast because of our differences, we are less burdened by pressures to conform. I partially agree with you. I partially agree because I wasn't trying, first of all, I wasn't trying to say I was self-centered in the sense of like, I only care about myself. It was more of just society is going to fuck us over no matter what. So... If society's gonna keep fucking us over, might as well just focus on ourselves first and foremost. So I do agree with you there that they look more into themselves. However, I don't agree with the topic of peop a lot of people don't ask themselves why they do things or what who they are and what they represent. Maybe it's just me because I'm a philosopher. I I. I dive deeper in philosophy and sociology and I love that shit. Um, but that I question my existence all the time. 
I always think about why people do the things they do, why people are the way they are, and I study that a lot. I know a lot of people don't do that, but I do, so I wouldn't be able to speak on that behalf. But when it came to me, they did cut out the fact in the video that I talked about my sociology background and my philosophy background, but I love doing human dives on people, doing deep dives on the human experience and the human connection so when they when this person says that they don't look inwards and they don't ask themselves i do so because we don't know a lot of people we can't assume that a lot of people do that or a lot of people don't do that so we can't assume i i spoke on behalf of me and what i think people are like that rather than me making that a factual statement. But I do agree with this person saying that um, autistic people are not self-centered, and that wasn't what I was trying to get across, and I'm sorry that I did. Um, that being said, this person's got a good point. I do like this person's stance, and um, I, I like the way they phrased it. Uh, this video is going to be good. I have another person because of his autism. I'm diagnosed. Thank you so much. Thank you for making this video. Someone waiting to get their waiting to get tested for autism puts them at ease. I'm glad. I'm glad. If you feel like you have autism, get tested. Please get tested for autism. One of the best things that ever happened to me was being diagnosed. It helped me tackle my issues. I agree. Uh, people who are diagnosed, it makes because self diagnosing is tough. Like a lot of people don't want to self diagnose, but I feel like when it comes to self when it comes to diagnosing, if you get the full on confirmation that you are autistic, it gives you an affirmation. It gives you a word of affirmation. It's like someone's if it's like you saying, I made this, I think it's good, and someone saying, Yes, it is good. It makes you feel better because they agree with you. God forbid someone brings out the court starts with peak autistic humor because it's true. Uh, yeah. I think I saw him in the Angry Birds movie. Yeah. <laughs> I did. Oh, this, this, this. I saw this comment already. I consider social aptitude to be more along the lines of you not understanding how a person communicates. Yeah, I, I usually talk about myself more. Thank you for speaking positively about self-diagnosis. All of my medical health professionals are aware I have autism and I have not but have not formally diagnosed me. It's hard finding places that accept new patients or finding places that accept my insurance. Testing is expensive and really difficult to get. Exactly. Exactly. I don't think anyone who who says that they could have autism wants to have autism. <laughs> I don't think anyone's self-diagnosing themselves because they want to. That I can t attest to. Then again, I don't know everyone, so we don't know. Who knows? I want to see the new comments. I want to see the the people saying shit. Uh, let's see. No, it's not human nature to transition gender. Uh huh. Sensory issues is dumb as fuck. Everyone has sensory issues to certain things that, like clothing that's made of a shitty material. Saying all autistic people face sensory issues is really fucking stupid because everyone has sensory issues to certain things. Materials that feel shitty will always be shitty. Okay, you gotta calm down. <laughs> you're you're vo you are vocal. Oh, where you come from? I guess some sensory issues may only apply to autism, but there would be a have there will have to be a study on that. I see where this person's coming from. Because, yeah, everyone could have sensory issues. It's just that an autistic person will have it more so. Not necessarily... Yeah, a person would have it more so, but you, you, are, you are mad. You gotta not be mad. Diagnosis is only the route for everyone. I'm autistic and self-diagnosed. Uh, because of this, how I need AIDS, I can start this dog. Happy that there isn't much point of getting a diagnosis when you're adult beyond violation. The period of time when speech is even AIDS is gone. The cost of the way I got my life reversed. Okay, so basically, diagnosis aren't the route for everyone. 
I hope this person's done their research. Because I wouldn't want to be the person to just look at someone at accounts of being autistic and being like, yep, I'm autistic. I highly encourage people to get diagnosed if they have autism. Some people don't get diagnosed, though. But if they've done their own research and really studied up on it, that's perfectly fine. While I encourage people to get diagnosed, you are completely valid if you don't get diagnosed. But I do not like this phrasing of there isn't much point getting a diagnosis when you're an adult beyond validation. One, a lot of adults, there could be adults where they don't get it. There could be adults where they genuinely don't know. And it wouldn't be a case of validation. And it would be a case of more just a certainty. And they just want to understand themselves more. But even if it was validation, what's wrong with someone wanting validation? It makes someone feel good. What's, what's wrong with that? Let's see. I'm autistic. Someone who just for someone who just struggles to determine sarcasm, Richie has managed to master it. The Angry Birds joke was legendary. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am. I didn't expect. I didn't expect uh, that to be sarcasm, but thank you. I, I'm. I'm glad people like the joke. I like joking with people. Autism isn't Down syndrome. People shouldn't treat it like it is. How do you treat Down syndrome? <laughs> How does someone treat Down syndrome? That's a complicated question. That's a complicated. That's a complicated statement. Cause yeah, you shouldn't treat autism like Down syndrome. But how does Down syndrome? How do you treat Down syndrome? I personally have never met someone in my life who has Down syndrome. And because I am, I don't know much about, about it, about the dysfunction, I don't want to say, I don't want to speak on it or speak on how to treat a Down syndrome person because I don't know. I Or someone with Down syndrome. I genuinely don't know. And it would be wrong for me to, to say that, to, to speak on behalf. Literally, who has ever said women can't be autistic? You'd be surprised. My respect for Richie was lost after I saw him. I saw this comment already, and I find it funny. Because despite the fact that they lost respect for me, they still called me by my real name instead of my dead name. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. But it's all power to them. It doesn't matter. You you have every right to do feel what you feel. I'm a bit triggered. This guy talks like a toddler. I'm pretty sure that's not because it's a separate thing. Exactly. It's not talking like a toddler. Is eroticism? What is eroticism? Hold on, what is roticism? Sound change that converts one constant to a uh, rotic constant in a certain environment. The most common may be of two. When a dialect or a member of a language family resists a change in pitch of sound. The a defective pronunciation. Huh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's definitely what it is. Roticism. That's definitely what it is. Holy crap, I learned something new today. I genuinely didn't know that. Like, I knew I had, like, a, a thing, a speech impediment. But I didn't know it was called roticism. I thought it was a lisp. Wow, I learned something new. Thank you, hey, it's, hey, this animal can talk. Thank you. You made me learn something new today. About my personal life. But yeah, I, I talk like a toddler. It's funny. I need to know where, that, where Richie got the shirt from the be and the beanie. The overshirt's from H&M. 
The undershirt's my merch store. The beanie is from my boyfriend's shop. It's not out yet, though, but it will be. I want to be friends with all these people. Well, why do you want to be friends with me? Why do you want to be friends with me? I, will, I, I don't mind. I like friends. Alrighty. I think this is good. This is a good place to end it. Uh, end the stream. Because I've been on for two hours. And I broke down the video. <sighs> a two hour dissertation on the autism video. If you guys want to support my streams. Links in the description below. If you want to fund the uni my university project. Right there. I'm running out of time though. So chances are the next stream I have. I won't have this on here anymore so yeah the archives of this is going to be on the robot archive channel if you miss this you'll be able to see it there thank you guys so much for stopping by and watching it was really this was really fun this was really nice really fun i it's kind of weird it's still weird that i'm in this video it's still weird but thank you guys so much for watching and i bid you all adieu bye bye